Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? Great. You know, today we're going to be talking about uh, leadership, and the title is I'm a Leader. And leadership is really important because we cannot, if we cannot influence people to follow, we can't help them. What we're suffering with in this world more than anything is a lack of leadership in our homes, in our communities, in our nation, in our schools. And without leadership, this is what happens. Everything remains the same or it declines. If we're going to change our families, if we're going to change our cities, if we're going to change our churches, what we need is influential leaders. Say with me, I'm a leader. When Jesus, when Jesus called his disciples to follow, he was a leader, they said yes. What did they say? Yes. yes. That means he must have had a reputation worthy to follow. Jesus at this time was 30 years old when he called his disciples and he had 30 years of preparation for this moment but by the time he called his disciples people already knew him and that's why every single disciple he called immediately left everything and what they do follow him and until we grow in leadership, because leadership is a skill, it's a skill of influence. Until we grow in leadership, this, this is a problem we're going to have. No one will follow us even though they need help. So we're going to talk about that. How do I become an influential leader? We're going to talk about what leadership is. And I pray by the time you're done, you'll get an impartation from God, an understanding of what leadership is, so you could impact your world. How many want to impact your world? And when you grow in leadership, it, you, you, uh, this was so great about it, you have it. Say it with me, you have it. And that means every atmosphere you go into, people could sense your authority. They could sense your your... They could sense your preparation. They could hear it in your voice that you've developed into a leader. And this, this is what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to go in atmospheres and change atmospheres. And there was, a, there was a thing they said about the disciples. This is what they said about them after Jesus resurrected from the dead. They said, these are the guys right here that are turning the world upside down. And they were bringing them before the courts and saying, these are the guys that are turning the world upside down. Everywhere they go, they just flip it. Every city they go to, they turn it around. Don't we want to be leaders like that? Come on, we, we need some leaders today that know what they stand for, have developed into maturity, and we got to stop complaining how bad things are and start being world changers and make an impact. And we can do this. Come on, we can grow. Complainers don't change nothing. Leaders do. You guys got that? Complainers don't change nothing. Leaders do, right? And when, when they want to, when an organization or a team wants to start winning, even though they're losing, what do they do? They bring in a new coach. They bring in a new manager. They bring in a new leader. They don't, like, get rid of the whole team. They just change leadership. And if you change leadership, you change results. How many get that? Because the plays are different. The mentality is different. And then the results are different. There are coaches that will take over a team and not even change the players and go from losing records to winning records the next year because they change mentality and they change process. They change work ethic. They changed conversations, and they changed the record. This is what we need. Come on. This is what we need, and we're going to learn how to become leaders of influence. Say it with me again. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. What is leadership? I want to talk to you about that for just a second. Leadership 
is the ability and skill. I, I want to stop there because I want you to understand this. Leadership is a skill that you and I can develop. And the reason I'm saying that, because you might be thinking, he's really gifted in leadership and think that leadership is just a gift. I'm not saying that people aren't gifted in leadership, but leadership is, a, is an ability and a skill every single one of us can develop. And I, and I also want you to know you're a leader whether you realize it or not. You're either a good leader or you're a bad leader, but you're a leader. You're influencing people for good or you're influencing people for bad, but you are a leader and you know what kind of leader you are by the people that are following you because they become like you. And you could be saying, I, well, my children, they're cussing. You got to be careful. So where where'd you hear that? You, you, you. Yeah. Right? It's very important for you to take responsibility for your leadership. Me, me as a pastor, I got to take responsibility. My, you say, well, pastor, are you growing? Well, my, my growth is your growth. If, when I see you grow, then I know it's working. I'm going to get that. If you don't grow, it doesn't matter how much I'm growing. I'll, my, my win is you growing. That's my win. But listen, it's the ability and skill to influence yourself, people, teams, and organizations to take the necessary actions to succeed. So leadership is influencing yourself first. Say it with me, for, first yourself. No one's interested in following you if you can't even follow, lead yourself. You got to lead yourself to victory before you could lead them to victory. You got to lead yourself to change before you could, come on, lead them to change. You got to discipline yourself before you could help them become disciplined. You guys get that? Nobody wants to follow somebody that can't even follow their own values, their own words, their own teachings. See, it, it's, you can't be a leader that says, do as I say. You got to say, do as I say and do as I do. You got to get it before you can give it. You guys you understand that? A lot of people, what they want to do is they want to be a trainer and they've never trained themselves. So if you cannot discipline yourself, you're disqualified to be a leader. You guys understand that? So we're here to learn, apply, and then I'm going to talk about something a little later, and master. So say, learn, apply, and what? Master. When you, when you master an area or you master a subject, you've now earned the right to be a trainer. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in a minute. But influence yourself. Then you can influence people, teams, organizations to take action. You, you're, you use your influence to help people take what? Take action that they need to take to succeed. So the idea of a leader is helping organization, teams, and people to succeed. Succeed. That word succeed, uh, it means to achieve the desired result. It means to prosper, to thrive, to grow, to make it, to overcome, to be victorious. Our responsibility as a leader is to help people prosper, get ahead, overcome, be victorious, thrive, be restored, be healed, be transformed. You use your influence to help people. You guys get this? You use your influence to what? Help people. Do people need help? They sure do. And if you don't help them and I don't help them, they remain in their mess. We need some leaders today. I love it. We can lead our families to a better place. Come on. We can lead our marriages to a better place. We can lead our schools to a better place. We can lead our cities to a better place. What this city needs is leadership. What your family needs is leadership. Well, come on. What this world needs is godly leadership. Say with me, I am a leader. Okay, now, I'm going to give you an example of leadership in the Bible. Abram, or Abraham, is a great example of a leader who influenced his small army of 318 men to victory over an army of tens of thousands. 
It makes no sense. This man, Abram, he had an army that he made up in his own house. He had, he had a, a big household and he had a big family. He had an entourage, Abram. And he had men in his own house, 318 men that grew up in his entourage that he trained for war. He trained them, say with me, he trained them for what? War. What, was he an army? No, he was a family. But he was preparing for battle. He uses influence to train. There will be battles. We got to train our kids for battle. Come on. You got to be trained in life for battle because battles and wars will come. Difficult times will come. And if you're not ready, you'll be overcome. Now, now what ended up happening in this time, there was a war that broke out. And in this war that broke out, there was four kings that got together and came against Sodom. And they came over the area and conquered it. Abram's nephew lived in, lived in that city. And when they conquered this city, they captured his family. Abram says, you messed up when you captured my family. So you say, I'm not going to let my family be captive. I'm not going to let my family be ripped off. I'm, my family is not going to be a slave. My family is not going to go to hell. My family is not going to get lost. Is there anybody right now fighting for your family? And if you don't fight for your family, they're going to remain captive. <laughs> say with me, we are in a war. If we do not fight this battle with the Word of God, and we don't fight this battle by living like Jesus, if we don't fight this battle and become mature believers, we're going to lose the war. Nothing's going to change. But there has to be a group of people that are saying, we are not victims. We are leaders. We change communities. We change cities. Come on. We rescue the captives. We set people free. Come on. There's people depressed. There's people suicidal. There's people addicted. There's people confused. They need a leader to lead them out of captivity, to lead them into freedom, to lead them into health. Come on, lead them into victory. So Abraham says, no, we're going to fight. So he raises his 318 men. He goes, guys, I've been training you for this. Let's go. Now, you're a real leader when you can mobilize people to take action. You cannot say, they're not doing what I say, and blame them. The, the reason they're not doing what you say is because you have no influence over them. It's okay to recognize that because leadership and influence can grow. Someone say, leadership and influence can what? That means if you don't have the influence that you need for them to follow you, that means you need to grow in influence with them. You guys get that? Never blame the people that are following you. Always take responsibility as a leader. It's the team. Coach, you're calling the plays. Right? I never complain about our church. Because to complain about the church is, is, is really admitting, this is what I'm saying, you, Marco, are failing. So this is what I do. I have to encourage the church. I have to grow as a leader. And any faults I see in the church as a leader, I have to take personal responsibility and say, Marco, you need to make adjustments. You guys understand that? And some of the adjustments, we need to be kinder. We need to be more loving. We need to be more consistent. Come on, we need to watch what we're saying coming out of our mouths. We need to be wiser. We need to be more skilled in relationship building. We have to understand that because if you don't become more skilled in leadership, you won't have influence. You cannot force people to follow you. Follow, if they follow you, it's because they've chosen to follow you. You're not a leader if you're forcing people to follow you. Leadership is not a position. Leadership is a skill of influence. 
Are we learning? Because if you could become a leader, you could transform any community. If you become a leader, you could transform any business. If you come on, if you're a leader, you could transform. Come on, you could transform people. Look at Genesis 14, 14. It says, when Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized. Say it with me. He what? You're a leader when you can mobilize people. Mobilized. He mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born in his household. Then he pursued Kedor Lamor's army until he caught up with them at Dan. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Abram recovered, uh, verse 16, Abram recovered all the goods that he had, had, he had taken and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. Without a leader, the people would remain captive. Without a leader, without a leader, the losses that they had would remain losses. Without a leader, the people would remain in poverty. Without a leader, the people would remain lost. Thank God for an influential leader that went after his nephew and say, you're going to have, I know we only got 318 and you got tens of thousands of soldiers, but understand this, you mess with the wrong family. Come on, because I'll understand this. When you become a leader for God, you not only have your 318, you got his resources, you got his power with you and God. Come on, and his word, you outnumber any enemy. There's always more for you than are against you because you have a righteous cause. You want to see people saved? And God says, I do too. So let's go with what you got and I'll go ahead and help you conquer your enemies and save your families. What we need is some leaders. Come on. So we had to grow. So how did he grow in leadership influence over, over his 318 men? This is what he did. Train them, invested in them. Don't expect to have this massive influence in people's lives when you don't, you're not willing to even spend time with them, training them, and teaching them. You guys gonna understand that? You gotta get ready. And for you to be a leader, you're gonna have to learn how to be a trainer. Train, invest, and then you can expect a return. And you say, man, I really wanna have some influence. You're gonna have to invest, teaching. And you know, if you're going to invest teaching and training, this is what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to spend a lot of time preparing. So, uh, spend a lot of time what? Like I spent a lot of time preparing for today. And I'm only on the intro. And that's probably all the cover today. So leadership is the ability and skill to influence yourself, people, teams, or organizations to take the necessary actions to succeed. To take the, it would take what? Okay. Uh, and when you're a leader, this, your, you, your goal is to cause change, right? Your goal is to cause what? Change. change. This is a problem. Nobody wants to change. You guys understand that? Nobody wants to change, but they want change. Everybody wants a better life. Come on, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to succeed. But this is a problem. They want you to change, but they don't want to change. And the only way they're going to get personal change is they have to personally change. As a leader, your responsibility is to get people to do what they don't want to do. So they could experience the life they've always wanted. You understand? As a leader, your job is to get them to do what they don't want to do so they can get re the results they've always wanted. See, people want the great results, but they don't want to do what it takes to get there. So you as a leader need to use your influence to help people do what they don't want to do to get the results that they have always wanted to get. And at the end, they're going to say thank you because if it wasn't for you, pushing me. If it wasn't for you, teaching me. If it wasn't for you, share with me. If it wasn't for you, do what you did. I wouldn't have done what I've done and I wouldn't be experiencing the victories I'm experiencing right now. And God is saying, I'm going to train you to be a leader, to help people to do what they don't want to do, to get results they've always wanted. 
That's influence. That's real influence. And that's why some of you uh, I mean, have a personal trainer. And a personal trainer's job is to hold you accountable and help you do what you don't want to do to get the body you've always wanted. Right? And, you, and some of you need a business coach. Because you want, you have this dream of accomplishing great things, but you need to right now submit to a business coach to help you do the things you need to do to succeed in a level you've never succeeded. You need a coach. Don't ever think that you got to sew together that there's not an area that you need coaching in. Because the moment you're not willing to be coached is the moment you stop growing. The reason you're here today is because you're saying, I need some coaching. I need some leadership. Are you learning something already? Right now, as we're talking about leadership, this is what's happening. You're getting an impartation of leadership. This is stuff that you won't even get in a university today because they're lacking leadership. There's a lot of leaders teaching leadership classes in universities that have never been a leader. They're talking about theory, but they've never had experience. I'm not talking about theory. I've had experience about this, and I've learned from the most experienced leader in the history of mankind is Jesus Christ. You want to become a leader? Follow the leader. Okay. Leadership is influence, and influence is trust. I'm getting deep with you guys. If you're, in, if you're right now, you're a Castle San Bernardino, you write down some real notes right now. <laughs> Leadership is influence. And influence is what? Trust. This is the idea. Until they trust you, they won't follow you. Question. Which is a really crazy question. Does the, do the social media influencers, your children's friends, or the local drug dealer on the street have more influence than you over your own kids? Good question. Don't get all upset. Because your influence can grow. We're talking about growing. Come on. Our leadership can grow because leadership is a skill. And since it's a skill, I can learn it. You guys got that? Since it's a skill, I can what? I really believe with the skills of leadership I've learned, I still have a long ways to grow and I have a long ways to go. But I really believe I could go into any church and turn it around. I could help it grow. I believe I could go into any organization and make it better. I could believe we could go into any city as a church and make an impact in that city. How many believe that? Come on. I believe that we could. Why? Because we're leaders with influence. And we know how, this, we know how to gain influence. This is how you gain influence. You build trust. Understand this. Trust is not a right. Trust is earned. You got to trust me. No, I don't have to trust you. You have to earn that. Well, you don't believe in me? Nope. Why would I believe you? Well, just believe me. Why? You've given me nothing to believe in you. You're making bad decisions. Why would I believe in you? And then why would I follow you? Blind leading the blind. I want more influence. Then you're going to have to be better at building trust. Say it with me. Build trust. So that means that you could be doing really good and do something to destroy the trust that you built. You're doing good and, and then you get mad and upset and cuss everybody out. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you, but I don't trust you. 
Well, you didn't forgive me if you don't trust me. No, you're mixing two things up, bro. No, I, I, I forgave you, but I don't, what? Say, trust is built. Someone say, trust is built. Trust. It means to place confidence in someone. So if I trust you, I place confidence in you. It means to rely upon. It means to believe in someone. That means when someone trusts me, they believe in me. They can rely on me. And they can place confidence in me because I've proven to be trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? When, you, when you've proven to be trustworthy, what's so cool about that, you've now developed a reputation. And when you develop a reputation of being trustworthy, dependable, somebody that could be relied on, this is, what, this is what's so great about developing a good reputation, is that before you get there, people already trust you based on your reputation. Our church has a reputation. I'm going to get that. In L.A., Pastor Gabriel is right now in a church that they gave him to use on Thursday nights because they know about the Wayward World Outreach. They don't know Gabriel. They know us. And because we have a reputation, a good reputation, we have influence. You guys understand that? Are we learning? Okay, we're just barely, barely starting here. <laughs> to become a leader of great influence, we must prove to be trustworthy. We must prove to be trustworthy, be loyal, be faithful, follow through, keep your word. If you say you're going to call, call. You cannot be trustworthy if you're a liar. Little fibbing. You cannot be trustworthy if you're good and then you get drunk and you act like a fool. You cannot be trustworthy if you're emotional, an emotional roller coaster. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We don't know who's going to show up. And, but the problem is, you, you, well, that's just the way I am. You could keep saying that, but understand this. While you're doing that and just being you and not maturing and not growing and being inconsistent in your life and being out of control, understand this. Doing that causes one thing, lack of trust, which means you have no influence. I want the next promotion. You can't even show up to work on time. <laughs> I've been here longer than everybody. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't matter. You're, you've proven unfaithful. And do you know yeah, you could be untrustworthy with your mouth behind closed doors, but it's still when you, when you show up publicly, there's an aura around you that people feel like, ah, I don't know. All right. Luke, 6, Luke 16, 10 says, the one, trustworthy, the one trustworthy in a very little thing is also trustworthy in much. All that means is that when you've proven to be faithful and trustworthy in small things, you'll be elevated to be responsible over greater things. So that means when you become trustworthy, this is what happens. Promotion happens. Influence happens. Growth happens. And that's why you can't underestimate the assignments you have right now. It doesn't matter how small the thing is. The question is, how well are you managing that small thing? Because if you don't manage that small thing well, there's not anything else coming for you. Right? So what do you need to do? You need to know what you need to do and then do it and be faithful with it, even though it's small. Stop asking for a house, and you can't even clean your apartment. I'm going to get that. I'm not, 
I'm not trying to dog nobody. I'm just saying. I've had people tell me, especially when I was in the car business and, and I was in charge of who to get promoted and they'll come to me, look, if you just give me that promotion, I promise you, I'll start performing. I'm just bored where I'm at. I feel like where I'm at is not reaching, like, like tapping into my potential. And, and then I would say, bro, if you can't handle that, what makes you think you can handle the next level? How you get promoted in influence and in leadership is faithfulness in the assignment you have. That means if you're cleaning the floors, be the best cleaner of floor person on the shift. Do more than's required. They're going to realize this person cleans the floors better than anyone. And when they need a manager, come on, to manage all the people that clean the floors, they're going to look at you because you've been faithful a little and they'll make you ruler over much. And God is saying when you're faithful, you'll get promoted in leadership. Does anybody want to get promoted? How you get promoted is being faithful where you're at. Be faithful with your discipleship group. Be faithful with your ministry. Be faithful with the two people that you're leading now. I want to lead more. I, I had a dream. I saw myself in, in front of crowds of thousands. And I went to this church service and they called me out. They told me, I'm an evangelist. Reach the whole world. There's a problem. You can't even reach your own neighborhood. And if you could be faithful, come on, with your kid, if you could be faithful with your uncle, if you could be faithful with your coworker, come on, if you could be faithful with this, the circle that you're in right now, God will give you a bigger circle. But stop thinking, I'm going to get to that circle without even managing the circle you got now. Now. I put what is, why it, it's supposed to say, why is leadership so important? Say it with me. Why is leadership so important? Well, this is, one, this is why. Most people desire to be healthy, wealthy, prosperous, peaceful, and enjoy thriving relationships, but they don't know how to achieve it. So most people want it, but they don't know how. Say it with me. Most people want it, but they don't know. They want it, but they don't know how. A leader figure it, figures out how to. Say it with me. A leader figures out how to. And then he does it. So a leader finds out how to. So a leader doesn't come back with, uh, you know, I, I had a, a staff member that came up to me and we set a goal, we set a vision to accomplish and he came back to me and he said, I didn't get it done, but I did my best. So he thought I was gonna say, oh, you did your best, that's awesome. You know what I told him? You need a new best. Because the, we don't set goals and not accomplish. If you're a leader, you gotta find a way to get it done. Because literally what you're telling me is you're giving me an excuse. And the reason that you didn't accomplish it is because you need to grow. And you'll never accomplish more than you're accomplishing now until you become a person you've never been. You'll never do more. You'll never do what you've never done until you become a person you never have been. And the idea of setting a goal and a vision to do what you've never done is to become a person you have never been so you get results you have never had. Some of us in life transformation. A leader finds a way to get it done and he doesn't return with excuses. He executes. Either you're going to execute or make a whole bunch of excuses. Pero, pero, pero. Pues, esto me pasó. You start being bilingual in your excuses. You'll never be a leader if you're full of excuses and reasons why you're not doing it. 
Because the idea of a leader is one that could get a vision. Someone said a leader is a visionary. That means a leader is saying, hey, we're going here. And the leader not only says we're going there, we're going there. We're going to get there. And this is, there's no other option. We are going to get there. Losing is not an option. Victory is the only option. Execution is the only option. Does anybody want to be a leader? You're going to have to be able to set small goals and hit them so you could graduate into bigger vision. But you'll never get bigger vision if you can't even set a small goal and hit it. I need to get my driver's license. Okay. It's been five years. Well, I want to be a truck driver. You can't even get a driver's license. And I'm not dogging anybody. That might be something really hard for you because you're scared. Or maybe I'm going to fail the test. It doesn't matter. You got to face your fears. And if you're ever going to be a leader, you're going to have to face your fears, get the thing done, find a way to do it, and then you can lead someone else on how to get their driver's license. You got to, come on, go through Holy Warriors and help someone else get through Holy Warriors. Sign up for membership today. Come on. You know what, what someone needs to do is commit finally. The reason you can't grow, your commitment's too weak. You'll never go to the next level of life until you give the next level of commitment. But it, what time is that class again? It's at one o'clock. Ah. Ah. Can we just like, just, can you just throw some water on me and just make me official? See, this is why the idea, you want to grow with no process. Your growth is in your inconvenience. Your growth, come on, is in the extra time you put in. The growth is when you do what you've never done so you get results you've never had. It's more than membership. You're finally committing to something. And when you commit to something, you can finally grow. It's at 1 o'clock. I want you to be there. Right? Why is leadership so important? Without leaders... The people stay where they're at. They stay sick, in poverty, in failure, in emotional turmoil, and lost for eternity for us. Unless they get a leader in their life, they stay. Jesus saw the need for leadership. In Matthew 9, 36, it says this. When he saw the crowds, when he saw the what? He had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless. The crowds were what? Confused just means they, when, when, when someone has a spirit of confusion, all of this is, is this. I don't know what to do. I've even run into the demon of confusion. And it, it, it's, let's go deeper. I, when, you, when you become an influential leader in the spirit realm, you can start, come on, transforming lives by actually removing demons off people's lives. How many want to go walk in that kind of leadership? Come on, spiritual leadership. Oh, that's a demon. Ow! I, 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 there, this is how I know when a spirit of confusion, a demon's there of confusion in someone's life, and I've cast this spirit out. The demon will say this, I don't know, I don't know. The person saying, I don't know, 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 I don't know. They keep saying that, I don't know. I go, I don't know. That's confusion. When you don't know what to do. And some of us right now, you're totally confused. You don't know what decisions you need to make, so you don't make any decisions, and you stay stuck. And that's why you need a leader, and that's why you need to be in church, and that's why you need to read the Word, and that's why, come on, you need some mentors, and that's why you need to invest in your spiritual life. There's some stuff you got together, but some of you right now, emotionally you're a wreck, relationally you're a wreck, some things aren't happening, you're kind of confused with what your life is about, and spiritually you're lost. And without a leader, you're going to stay lost. I want a better life. But you're lost. And you don't know how to get out of it. But Jesus knows how to get you out of it. It's time for you to, to choose a new leader and get a leader in your life because understand that confusion is not going to go anywhere. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have to be taught 
out of your confusion. The people were confused and what? Helpless. The people were confused and? Like sheep without a shepherd. Like, like sheep without a leader. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. All he was saying is, there's a lot of people to help, but there's not a lot of workers and leaders to help them. Just because they need help doesn't mean they're going to let you let, help them. You guys understand? You're going to have to build trust for them to let you help them. And if they don't trust you, even though they're in a mess, they won't let you help them. And that's why you got to grow, not just for your own selfish ambitions. You got to grow and become, come on, mature, become skilled in relationships, become consistent. Come on, be committed to Jesus Christ. Start living by the Word of God. Start studying the Word of God yourself. Come on, you cannot depend on me, ju just on me. You got to develop your own study time, your own disciplines. And when you do that, you're qualifying yourself to lead someone out of their health. Helpless state. We got to stop being so nonchalant about the word, about your life. Stop cruising and take your life serious. Start studying. Start learning. I don't want a lawyer that don't know, how, don't know law. You know a lot, not, not really. I, I, just, I got a degree, though. Hey, man, I'm facing some real time. I, I hope it works out. <laughs> My life's at stake. I, and this is what's happening. Their lives are at stake, and they got bad lawyers. You know what I mean? You don't know the word, so you can't even help them out of their mess. Someone say, you got to know the law. The Word of God, that's a law. <laughs> There's 39.24 million people in California. A lot of people to help. There's 331 million people in the U.S. There's a lot of people to help. There's 7.8 billion people in the world. There's no shortage of people to help. Every one of the 7.8 billion people have a need, and they're confused in the area, and they're helpless unless they get a leader. Amen? Amen? Come on, we need to raise up some Christian leaders that, that turn into the politicians to lead. Come on, our, come on our, our, our cities. We need some Christian leaders. But it starts right now with self-leadership. And it starts, get yourself, lead yourself to church on a regular basis. Right? I want to be a professor. You can't even show up to class. Right? And this is the last thing about leadership. I didn't even go into how to become an influential leader. Man. Lord, help us. Okay, this is what I'll do. Man, I can't say nothing here. What I'm going to do is, because I have to show you how to be an influential leader. Very, 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 very important. I just have to lay the groundwork right now how important leadership is and what leadership is. Uh, uh, Wednesday night, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in and I'm going to talk to you how to become an influential leader, a world changer, that when you show up, come on, you could turn worlds upside down, business upside down, situations upside down. Are you ready? This Wednesday, oh man, pues, I got to drive? I got another service? Yeah, I see you want to become a doctor, but it takes 10 years of schooling to become a doctor. And God is saying, I'm calling you to be a doctor. And if you're going to be a doctor, you're going to put in the effort. So you want to get paid like a doctor, but you want to go to school like a doctor. Let's end it with this. Without wise leadership, say with, without wise leadership, the people will end up in ruin. They'll ruin their lives, their minds, their marriages, their families, their health, their future, their businesses, their cities, their nations, their schools. In Proverbs eleven fourteen, it says this, a city, it could be a family, a ministry, a business without wise leaders will end up in what? Will end up in ruin. That means they'll end up in failure. They'll be defeated. 
They'll fall into the hand of the enemy. They'll be destroyed. They'll be in disrepair, decay. That means they'll decline in excellence and prosperity and health. A, a, a city, a family, a church without leadership goes into decline, decay, and destruction and failure. But a city with a leader, a church with a leader, a business with a leader leads the people, come on, leads the organization, leads the people to victory, leads the people to eternal life, leads the people to freedom, leads the people to peace, leads the people to prosperity. Say with me, I am a leader. Are you guys ready to accept your Christian identity? When Jesus called the disciples to come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. I'm going to train you how to be a leader and influence people out of their mess and give them the new life. This idea, will you follow me so you could follow, come on, so you could follow me, learn my ways, so you could teach them my ways? This is how it works. I'm so proud of every one of you. I'm going to learn a little bit about leadership today. I'm telling you, this is very important. This this Wednesday, I'm going to do part two, which is part three for those that, that were actually. I'm going to show you how to become an influential leader. You do not want to miss it. I'm going to give you three steps to do it. It's going to be awesome, okay? Pastor, where's Pastor Christian at? I'm going to have him close out. How many were blessed today and got a word from God? Awesome. Come on. Come on. If you received a word, give God some praise right now. Membership at one o'clock. Sign up for school. You guys can remain seated at this time. Go to remain seated. Uh, before anyone else leaves, we want to give you an opportunity to now respond and to receive the greatest gift that the greatest leader in the world has ever presented to you. Jesus came and said this. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve, to be a ransom for many. And what did he mean when he said that? He said, I came to do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. The Bible says that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all made mistakes. How many know that that's true? Just head nod if you know that that's true. The Bible also says this, that the wages or the price of our sin is death. So we owe a really big price for the sins that we've chosen to commit. We've made a decision, a willing decision to sin and to make an exchange. I'll sin, I'll take the pleasure, but now I owe a big price, that's death. Because we've sinned, we owe this price. And this price cannot be paid by being a good person. This price cannot be paid by just coming to church every single Sunday. This price can't be paid uh, by trying to not be so bad at times. We could live a thousand lifetimes trying to make up for the ba one bad decision we've made and it won't cut it. So what's the hope? What do we do? This is why God's love this is why God sent his son. God, the Bible says this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, while you were still in that condition and you still needed to pay that debt, Jesus stepped in and said, I will pay the debt for you. I will do what you are supposed to do. I will go to the cross. Jesus didn't deserve the cross. He was perfect and without sin. But he gave up his life willingly so that he can make an exchange and he'll he will take your sin on the cross upon himself and give you his righteousness give you his freedom give you his forgiveness and give you eternal life we were once dead but jesus came in to give us eternal life so today i want to ask you this if you're ready to receive and you want to receive eternal life you want to receive the forgiveness of your sins this is how you can do that repent which means turn away from your old life and put your faith in Jesus today. Don't put your faith in your good works because our good works aren't good enough. But Jesus' good works is good enough. What Jesus did is enough. So repent today. Put your faith in Jesus. If you're saying that to me, I want to put my faith in Jesus today and I want to receive eternal life. When I count to three all over this room, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Three, raise your hands all over this room. You're saying, that's me. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand over there. Anybody else? I see your hand right here. I see your hand, brother. I see your hand back there. Proud of you. Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. Just raise your hand so I could see it. I see your hand. Proud of you. Raise your hand so I could see. I see your hand. Good job. Good job. Anybody else? Come on. There's still time for you. Come on. I see you. I see you. We're proud of you. I see you over here. I see you too. This is what we're going to do. I want us all to stand to our feet. Everyone in this room. I want to ask you to do one more thing. For those that raise your hand today, make a bold statement right now. 
and do do me a favor of giving us the honor of praying with you and congratulating you if you said yes to that and you raise your hand i want you to come out of your seat and come forward today and come join us here at the front with the prayer team and as they do church let's give them a round of applause let's clap for them come forward we want to pray with you come on up come on up guys come on let's give them a hand they're making their way forward right now we're gonna pray with you congratulate you yes Come on, if that's you, you're saying there's still some time. They're still coming forward, guys. They're still coming forward. Yes. Awesome. Well, let's do this. Let's pray. Come on, let's clap for our brother who's coming forward right now. Proud of you. Big day. For those that just came up, look at me for just a second. We want to help you in this walk. So we have a class that's called Holy Warriors. And this class is designed to help you grow in your spiritual walk. I know that what you're going through right now is hard, but let me tell you this, it's, it, life is harder without Jesus. Let's do this together. You're gonna get a growth coach. You're gonna get someone that's gonna help you, that's gonna teach you how to read the word, that's gonna help you to get baptized. We're gonna go with you in this walk. So the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you, but they're also gonna sign you up for your next step, which is Holy Warriors class. Are we ready? Let's do this. Church, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead so that I can be saved. You didn't deserve it, but you did it anyways. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. I put my faith in you. I repent right now of my old way of living. And from this moment forward, I will live for you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new creation. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice so that I can have life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, church, can we give God some praise right now? Well, today is Membership Sunday. So that means that at 1 p.m. or 1.15 in the South Hall, you can make it official to become a member of the Wayworld Outreach. Lunch will be provided, and you'll also get a new Wayworld Outreach identification card. So come join us at 1 p.m. Hear from Pastor Marco and the team about how the church started. We'd love to see you. God bless you. And don't forget, tonight at 6 p.m. Sunday night, revival services are kicking off again this Sunday night. We'll see you again. Love you, church. And if you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you.